Hello guys! Welcome back to Denson Channel. If this is your first time visiting my YouTube channel, please tap the subscription button and hit the notification bell to get updated with my future uploads. Hello guys, how are you today? I hope everything is fine. Today please join me as we visit the Wells Cathedral in uh, Somerset, England. Wells Cathedral is an Anglican Cathedral in Wells, Somerset, England. Dedicated to St. Andrew the Apostle, it is the seat of the Bishop of Bath and Wells, whose cathedra it holds as Mother Church of the Diocese of Bath and Wells. Built as a Roman Catholic cathedral from around 1175 to replace an earlier church on the site since 705. It became an Anglican cathedral when King Henry VIII split from Rome. It is moderately sized for an English cathedral. Its broad west front and large central tower are dominant features. It has been called unquestionably one of the most beautiful and most poetic of English cathedrals. Its Gothic architecture is mostly inspired from early English style of the late 12th to 13th centuries, lacking Romanesque work that survives in many other cathedrals. Building began about 1175 at the east end of the choir. Historian John Harvey sees it as Europe's first truly Gothic structure, breaking the last constraints of Romanesque. The stonework of its pointed arcades and fluted piers bears pronounced moldings and carved capitals in a foliate stiff leaf style. Its early English front with 300 sculpted figures is seen as a supreme triumph of the combined plastic arts in England. The east end retains much ancient stained glass. Unlike many cathedrals of monastic foundation, Wells has many surviving secular buildings linked to its chapter of secular canons, including the Bishop's Palace and the 15th century residential Vicar's Close. It is a grade 1 listed building. The earliest remains of a building on the site are of a late Roman mausoleum identified during excavations in 1980. 
An abbey church was built in Wells in 705 by Aldhelm, the first bishop of the newly established Diocese of Sherborne during the reign of King Ian of Wessex. It was dedicated to St. Andrew and stood at the site of the cathedral's cloisters where some excavated remains can be seen. The front in the cathedral's south transept is from this church and is the oldest part of the present building. In 766, Sinewolf, King of Wessex, signed a charter endowing the church with 11 hides of land. In 909, the seat of the diocese was moved from Sherborne to Wells. The first bishop of Wells was Athelm, who crowned King Athelstan. Athelm and his nephew Dunstan both became Archbishop of Canterbury. During this period, a choir of boys was established to sing the liturgy. Wells Cathedral School, which was established to educate these choir boys, dates its foundation to this point. There is, however, some controversy over this. Following the Norman conquest, John de Belula moved the seat of the bishop from Wells to Bath in 1090. The church at Wells, no longer a cathedral, had a college of secular clergy. Construction of the cathedral began in about 1175 to the design of an unknown master mason. Wells is the first cathedral in England to be built from its foundation in Gothic style. According to historian John Harvey, it is the first truly Gothic cathedral in the world. Its architect, he being entirely dispensed with all features that bound the contemporary East of Canterbury Cathedral and the earlier buildings of France, such as the east end of the Abbey of St. Denis to the Romanesque. Unlike these churches, Wells has clustered piers rather than columns and has a gallery of identical pointed arches rather than the typically Romanesque form of paired openings. The style with its simple lancet arches without tracery and convoluted moldings is known as Early English Gothic. From about 1192 to 1230, Adam Black, the earliest master mason at Wells for whom a name is known, continued the transept and nave in same manner as his predecessor. Black was also the builder of the north porch to his own design. The early English West Front was commenced around 1230 by Thomas Norris, with building and sculpture continuing for 30 years. Its southwest tower was begun 100 years later and constructed between 1365 and 1395, and the northwest tower between 1425 and 1435 both in perpendicular Gothic style to the design of William Winford, who also filled many of the cathedral's early English lancet windows with delicate tracery. The undercroft and chapter house were built by unknown architects between 1275 and 1310. The undercroft in the early English and the chapter house in the geometric style of decorated Gothic architecture 
In about 1310, work commenced on the Lady Chapel to the design of Thomas Whitney, who also built the central tower from 1315 to 1322 in the decorated Gothic style. The tower was later braced internally with arches by William Joy. Concurrent with his work, in 1329, to 1345, Joy made alterations and extensions to the choir, joining it to the Lady Chapel with the Retro Choir, the later in the flowing decorated style. Later changes include the perpendicular vault of the tower and construction of Sugar's Chapel. In 1475 and 1490, by William Smith. Also, Gothic Revival. Renovations were made to the choir and pulpitum by Benjamin Ferry and Anthony Salvin from 1842 to 1857. Wells is a total length of 126 meters. Like Canterbury, Lincoln, and Salisbury cathedrals, it has the distinctly English arrangement of two transepts, with the body of the church divided into distinct parts. The nave, choir, and retro choir, beyond which extends the Lady Chapel. The facade is wide, with its towers extending beyond the transepts, on either side. There is a large projecting porch on the north side of the nave, forming an entry into the cathedral. To the northeast is the large octagonal chapter house, entered from the north choir aisle by a passage and a staircase. To the south of the nave is a large cloister, unusual in that the northern range that adjacent the cathedral was never built. In section, the cathedral has the usual arrangement of a large church, a central nave with an aisle on each side, separated by two arcades. The elevation is in three stages arcade, triforium gallery, and clerestory. The nave is 20 meters in height, very low compared to the Gothic cathedrals of France. It has a marked horizontal emphasis caused by the triforium having a unique form, a series of identical narrow openings lacking the usual definition of the base. The triforium is separated from the arcade by a single horizontal string course that runs unbroken the length of the nave. There are no vertical lines linking the three stages as the shafts supporting the bolt rise above the triforium. The exterior of Welsh Cathedral presents a relatively tidy and harmonious appearance since the greater part of the building was executed in a single style, the early English Gothic. This is uncommon among English cathedrals, where the exterior usually exhibits plethora of styles. At Wells, Later changes in the perpendicular style were universally applied, such as filling the early English lancet windows with simple tracery, the construction of a parapet that encircles the roof, and the addition of pinnacles framing its gable, similar to those around the chapter house and on the west front. At the eastern end, there is a 
proliferation of tracery with repeated motifs in reticulated style. A stage between geometric and flowing decorated tracery. The west front is 30 meters high and 45 meters wide and built of inferior oolite of the Middle Jurassic period which came from the Dalting Stone Quarry about 13 kilometers to the east. According to the architectural historian Alec Clifton Taylor, it is one of the great sites of England. West France in general take three distinct forms. Those that follow the elevation of the nave and aisles, those that have paired towers at the end of each aisle, framing the nave, and those that screen the form of the building. The west front at Wells has the paired tower form, unusual in that the towers do not indicate the location of the aisles, but extend well beyond them, screening the dimensions and profile of the building. The west front rises in three distinct stages, each clearly defined by a horizontal course. This horizontal emphasis is counteracted by six strongly projecting buttresses, defining the cross-sectional divisions of nave, aisles, and towers, and are highly decorated each having canopied niches containing the largest statues on the facade. At the lowest level of the facade is a plain base contrasting with the stabilizing the ornate arcades that rise above it. The base is penetrated by three doors which are in stark contrast to the often imposing portals of the French Gothic cathedrals. The outer two are of domestic proportion and the central door is ornamented only by a central post. Quatrefoil and the fine moldings of the arch. Above the basement rise two stories ornamented with quatrefoils and niches originally holding about 400 statues with 300 surviving until the mid-20th century. Since then, some have been restored or replaced, including the ruined figure of Christ in the gable. The third stages of the flanking towers were both built in the perpendicular style of the late 14th century to the design of William Winford that on the northwest was not begun until about 1425. The design maintains the general proportions and continues the strong projections of the buttresses. The finished product has been criticized for its lack of pinnacles and it is probable that the towers were intended to carry spires which were never built. Despite its lack of spires or pinnacles, the architectural historian Bannister Fletcher described it as the highest development in English Gothic of this type of facade. In 1969, when the large chunk of stone fell from a statue near the main door, it became apparent that there was an urgent need for restoration of the west front. Detailed studies of the stonework and of conservation practices were undertaken under the cathedral architect Alban Caro and a restoration committee formed. The methods selected were those devised by Eve and Robert Baker and clerk of works 
to the cathedral from 1935 to 1978 had previously experimented with the washing and surface treatment of architectural carvings on the building and his techniques were among those tried on the statues. The conservation was carried out between 1974 and 1986 using non-invasive procedures such as washing with water and solution of lime, filling gaps and damaged surfaces with soft mortar to prevent the ingress of water and stabilizing statues that were fracturing through corrosion of metal dowels. The surfaces were finished by painting with a thin coat of mortar and saline to resist further erosion and attack by pollutants. The restoration of the facade revealed much paint adhering to the statues and their niches, indicating that it had once been brightly colored. Choir Transept and Nave the particular character of this early English interior is dependent on the proportion of the simple lancet arches. It is also dependent on the refinement of the architectural details, in particular the moldings. The arcade, which takes the same form in the nave, choir and transepts, is distinguished by the richness of both moldings and carvings. Each pier of the arcade has a surface enrichment of 24 slender shafts in 8 groups of 3, rising beyond the capitals to form the deeply undulating moldings of the arches. The capital themselves are remarkable for the vitality of the stylized foliage in a style known as stiff leaf. The liveliness constructs with the formality of the molded shafts and the smooth and broken areas of ashlar masonry in the spandrels. Each capital is different and some contain small figures illustrating narratives. The bolt of the nave rises steeply in a simple quadripartite form in harmony with the nave arcade. The eastern end of the choir was extended and the whole upper part elaborated in second quarter of the 14th century by William Joy. The bolt has a multiplicity of ribs in a net-like form which is very different from that of the nave and is perhaps a recreation in stone of a local type of compartmented wooden roof of which example remain from the 15th century including those at St. Cuthbert's Church in Wales. The bolts of the aisles of the choir also have a unique pattern. Until the early 14th century the interior of the cathedral was in unified style, but it was to undergo two significant changes to the tower and to the eastern end. Between 1315 and 1322, the central tower was heightened and topped by a spire, which caused the piers that supported it to show signs of stress. In 1338, the mason William Joy employed an unorthodox solution by inserting low arches topped by inverted arches of similar dimensions, forming scissors like structures. These arches brace the piers of the crossing on three sides, while the easternmost side is braced by a choir screen. The bracing arches are known as St. Andrew's cross arches 
in a reference to the patron saint of the cathedral. They have been described by Wim Swan, rightly or wrongly, as brutally massive and intrusive in an otherwise restrained interior. Welsh Cathedral has a square east to the choir, as is usual and like several other cathedrals including Salisbury and Lichfield, has a lower Lady Chapel projecting at the eastern end, begun by Thomas Whitney in about 1310, possibly before the chapter house was completed. The Lady Chapel seemed to have begun as a freestanding structure in the form of an elongated octagon, but the plan changed and it was linked to the eastern end by extension of the choir and construction of the second transept of retro choir, east of the choir, probably by William Joy. The Lady Chapel has a bolt of complex and somewhat irregular pattern, as the chapel is not symmetrical about both axes. The main ribs are intersected by additional non-supporting lime ribs, which in this case form a star-shaped pattern at the apex of the bolt. It is one of the earliest lime bolts in England. There are five large windows of which four are filled with fragments of medieval glass. The tracery of the window is in the style known as reticulated gothic, having pattern of a single repeated shape, in this case a trefoil, giving a reticulate or net-like appearance. A retro choir extends across the east end of the choir and into the east transepts. At its center, the bolt is supported by a remarkable structure of angled piers. Two of these are placed as to complete the octagonal shape of the ladies' chapel. A solution described by Francis Bond as an intuition of genius. The piers have attached shafts of marble and with the bolts that they support, create a vista of great complexity from every angle. The windows of the retro choir are in reticulated style like those of Lady Chapel but are fully flowing decorated in the tracery moldings from ogival curves. The chapter house was begun in the late 13th century and built in two stages completed about 1310. It is a two-story structure with the main chamber raised on an undercroft. It is entered from a staircase which divides and turns. One branch leading through the upper story of chain gate to Bikers Close and decorated interior is described by Alec Clifton Taylor as architecturally the most beautiful in England. It is octagonal with its rib bolt supported on a central column. The column is surrounded by shafts of Purbeck marble, rising to a single continuous rippling foliate capital of stylized oak leaves and acorns. Quite different in character from the early English stiff leaf foliage. Above the molding spring 32 ribs of strong profile giving an effect generally like to a great palm tree. 
The windows are large with geometric decorated tracery that is beginning to show an elongation of form and ogis in the lesser lights that are characteristic of flowing decorated tracery. The tracery lights still contain ancient glass. Beneath the window are 51 stalls, the canopies of which are in lib by carvings, including many heads curved in a light-hearted manner. Wells Cathedral contains one of the most substantial collections of medieval stained glass in England. Despite damage by parliamentary troops in 1642 and 1643, the oldest surviving glass dates from the late 13th century and is in two windows on the west side of the chapter house staircase. Two windows in the side choir aisle are from 1310 to 1320. The Lady Chapel has five windows of which four date from 1325 to 1330 and include images of a local Saint Dunstan. The east window was restored to a semblance of its original appearance by Thomas Willemont in 1845. The other windows have complete canopies but the pictorial sections are fragmented. The east window of the choir is a broad, seven-light window dating from 1310 to 1345. It depicts the tree of Jesus, or the genealogy of Christ, and demonstrates the use of silver staining, a new technique that allowed the artist to paint details on the glass in yellow, as well as black. The combination of yellow and green glass and the application of bright yellow stains gives the window its popular name, the golden window. It is flanked by two windows, each side in the clerestory, with large figures of saints, also dated 1340 to 1345. In 2010, a major conservation program was undertaken on the G's tree window. The panels in the chapel of St. Catherine are attributed to Arnold Nijimigen and date from 1520. They were acquired from the destroyed church of St. Jean Ruven. St. Jean Ruven, with the last panel having been purchased in 1953. The large three poor lancet to the nave west was glaze and expense of Dean Creighton at the cost of 140 British pounds in 1664. It was repaired in 1813 and the central light was largely replaced to a design by Archibald Kent Lee Nicholson between 1925 and 1931. The main north and south transept and windows by James Powell and Sons were erected in the early 20th century. In the north transept is Wells Cathedral clock, an astronomical clock from about 1325, believed to be by Peter Lightfoot, a monk of Glastonbury. Its mechanism, dated between 1386 and 1392, was replaced in the 19th century and the original moved to the Science Museum in London, where it still operates. It is the second oldest surviving clock in England after the Salisbury Cathedral clock. The clock has its original medieval face apart from the time on the 24-hour dial. It shows the motion of the sun and the moon, the phases of the moon, and the time since the last new moon. 
The astronomical dial presents a geocentric or pre copernican view, with the sun and the moon revolving round a central fixed earth, like that of the clock at Ottery St. Mary. The quarters are chimed by a quarter jack, a small automaton known as Jack Blandifers, who hits two bells with hammers and two with his heels. At the striking of the clock, justing knights appear above the clock face. On the outer wall of the transept, opposite Bikers Hall, is a second clock face of the same clock, placed there just over 70 years after the interior clock and driven by the same mechanism. The second clock face has two quarter jacks in the form of knights in armor. In 2010, the official clock winder retired and was replaced by an electric mechanism. The first record of an organ at this church dates from 1310. A smaller organ, probably for the Lady Chapel, was installed in 1415. In 1620, an organ built by Thomas Dallam was installed at a cost of 398 pounds. The 1620 organ was destroyed by parliamentary soldiers in 1643. An organ built in 1662 was enlarged in 1786 and again in 1855. In 1909 to 1910, an organ was built by Harrison and Harrison of Durnharm, with the best parts of the old organ retained. It has been serviced by the same company ever since. Since November 1996, the cathedral has also had a portable chamber organ by the Scottish makers, Lammer Muir. It is used regularly to accompany performances of Tudor and Baroque music. The first recorded organist of Wales was Walter Bagel. In 1416, the post of organist or assistant organist has been held by more than 60 people since. Peter Stanley Lyons was master of choristers at Wales Cathedral and Director of Music at West Cathedral School in 1954 to 1960. The Choral Conductor James William Webb Jones, father of Lyon's wife Bridget, was Headmaster of Welsh Cathedral School in 1955 to 1960. Malcolm Archer was the appointed organist and master of the Wires from 1966 to 2004. Matthew Owens was the appointed organist from 2005 to 2019. The bells of Wales are the heaviest ring of ten bells in the world. The tenor bell, known as Herewell, weighing 2,858 kilos. They are hung for full circle ringing in the English style of chains ringing. The bells are now hung in the southwest tower, although some were originally hung in the central tower. Thank you for watching. Please click like and leave your comments below. 
If you are not yet subscribed, please do not forget to tap the subscription button and hit the notification bell to get updated with my future uploads. See you on my next video.